Coach, it's finally a game week for the MLS season. Uh, yeah. How does it look out there five days away? Well, sun's peeking out. So that's good news. Uh, although I do like Lumen when it's windy, cold, rainy, wet. Uh, helps. Uh, team seems to be in a good mood. Uh, the messaging has been, you know, it's been a bit of a long preseason interrupted with the you know shortened trip to Morocco we would like to stay there a little longer uh, but it's here uh, crunch time money time you know season it's here so that's what we're focusing on and just making sure we fine-tune everything really quickly checking on uh, injury statuses to uh, both Raul and to Obed Vargas yeah Raul's day-to-day -day. Uh, he's off to the side just because he needs to make sure he complete some fitness testing we'll know later in a week what his true status is but Obed will not be involved this week I'll just rule him out right away but he'll be you know back in full full training they're being a little cautious with him he's got U20s coming up uh, you know we want to protect him a little bit that's his shooting quads a little different so uh, we want to be a little careful with the kid for a bear uh, in, the, in the time he's been here so far, a um, little bit of a different player than a uh, Will Bruin. Uh, so when you have yeah. him up there as opposed to role, how do things change uh, with, with kind of that second? Yeah, look, Will was a really useful player for us. Did a good job. I'm happy that he signed in Austin. Uh, a bear is different. You know, he's 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 smoother. He's you know, and not all arms and elbows and headers and you know, fight and all that. He's more subtle. Uh, reminds me a little bit of Montero. That's why he and Freddie are good friends off the field. Um, <clears throat> you know, they're they're class forwards. They they score goals. Uh, so both of those two guys, you know, in case Raul can't make it back, happy to have those guys on the squad. So just staying on the injury component, uh, we saw Albert come off a little bit sooner. Yeah, he rolled his ankle a little bit, but we'll assess that. I'm not I'm not too worried about it. He wanted to keep training, but I, as a coach, uh, said no. The most important game is Sunday, so we'll we'll get him back out there. We'll assess. Stay, oh, go ahead. I gotta finish on. Staying on the midfield subject, uh, Daniel Leva. He seemed to cover a lot of ground in the two Louisville games. Just kind of want to give you a take on how yeah. he did, how he played. Yeah. Look, there is competition, <clears throat> and that's something that the club has to, in a global view, has to figure that out because Danny's super talented he's got a chance to go with the 20s Josh is super talented Obed's super talented JP's coming back Albert's there we play Christian in there if I wanted to I mean it's it's a over you got young Sota I mean it's a it's a it's a conundrum uh, and Danny what he's done is he's raised the level of training and games because he's pushing makes Josh better, makes Obed better, makes everybody better. So that's, you know, in some small way, a little bit of leadership by a young kid, which, you know, Danny's a smart kid. He gets it. Not, not so much how, but when with such great competition game on Sunday, when do you start kind of figuring out that line? What is it comfortable for you to... Well, look, Moz, we're not... <clears throat> look, our last tune-up game was pretty much it. I mean, there's a couple of questions, but you know, it's, it's, we've been training a different style, a little bit different system. Uh, everybody kind of knows it, provided there's no knocks, injuries. Uh, and then the last thing will just be, you know, in game rotations. I mean, we've got a lot of games this year, and that's what we're going to start talking about now is, you know, look, the first couple of weeks, it's pretty good, first three or four weeks, and then we've got to, pile of games coming up and you know we will be missing uh, Obed and Danny f hopefully they make the World Cup squad the U20s so there'll be there'll be some playing time going around there's a sequence there I don't know if you smiled but we're watching where two back to back and the went down the lane and then passed the dead and scored and then the next time he had the ball that he shot it just what do you see for me it looks a little spot here <clears throat> well, I mean, look, I always love it when your senior players get in the groove, the goal scorers get in the grooves. That's always handy. The one thing I would add to our little discussion here is we had a 14-year-old kid uh, out here, Jordy, uh, academy kid, because we needed some 
that kid was pretty smooth. Pretty smooth in front of goal. Liked having, I like seeing that. Stay with the young talent. Um, Aquino uh, just had Chris, a race yeah. uh, with the U.S. National Team. Do you want to get your take on it? Well, he's been in enough of our training sessions that I know that he's a quality kid. So how he continues to develop and how we get him assimilated with more of the defiance in the first team. I mean, we've got some good kids coming up. Uh, you mentioned the amount of games a couple minutes ago. Um, the MLS schedule now with Apple has it, most games, excluding this one, is Sunday on, on Saturdays and Wednesdays. It's pretty, pretty yeah. consistent. How does that help you as a coaching staff to have a very consistent schedule? Well, it, of, uh, it helps the fitness guys more because they can really do some periodization as to which weeks are up weeks, which ones are down weeks. You got their six week cycles. You know, it helps them a lot. So let's see if that translates into we have a fresher team at the end of the year. You know, that was part of the part of the problem last year. We put a lot of energy in a Champions League and then kind of fizzled at the end. So with the consistent schedule, now there is the new version of League's Cup in the middle of the year and fixture congestion. So let's see how that goes. But it should, this beginning part of the season, should help the fitness guys. And it became official this morning that uh, the first round of the playoffs will be a three-game series. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on, on that change? Yeah, I, I have to read it over again. I was on a coaches committee meeting and we discussed it and I thought there might be some tweaks and I guess it's is what it is and it's coming out. I, I'm going to read the report just so I can speak cleanly about it. But I mean, look, yeah, more teams are in it. Apple TV wants some more playoff games. I think they're trying to do the best they could. But let me digest it first and then I'll give you guys a more educated opinion. But just as someone who's lived with soccer his whole life, is it a little odd, you know? I like, days? look, if you're asking me the question, I like one and done. I am a one and done type of guy. I think the feeling amongst the coaches, we're all, we'd prefer that. But, you know, look, this is, <clears throat> this is a big deal. Apple's a big sponsor, so we get it. I wonder if you take on Colorado, what they presented in midfield. And, you know, Price. They got a new kid in midfield. They got Price, uh, Wilson, uh, Abukar. I've always liked him. Tough, tough defender. Uh, Bassett. I mean, they, they, it's a good squad. It's a good squad. I mean, Barrios. I mean, Barrios and Nuhu. That's worth worth the price of a ticket. Watching those two guys go at each other. So it's a good team, and I and I really appreciate the job that Robin does. I think he's a I think he's a really good coach. Gets Brian. his team organized. Sorry, Brian. How are you feeling about your defense, your back line right now? Well, good. I mean, I didn't like the goal we gave up against against Louisville, but that was more for you look. We're, it was a training game, and I was pushing them to try and play out of the back, and you know we got stuck because Steph was playing out of the back. That's how Louisville scored. So defensively, we're okay. You know, we'll still see. There's still competition in that back line, and you know, we'll we'll see how it goes. Without giving Come too much, much uh, you you talked about adjustments uh, offensively. Has there been any adjustment to set pieces, particularly, and maybe being more effective in those? <clears throat> well, we actually have done a little bit more messaging. We'll work on the film. You know, we obviously scored that goal against Louisville. Uh, but there are some common themes that we're going to go over, and we'll have little, you know, different variations. But uh, yeah, it'll be a renewed emphasis this year for sure. Did it feel like a, a longer off season with no postseason yeah. play? Yeah, we didn't make the playoffs, so it was for sure longer. I, we didn't like it. I was going to say, just you know, this, like, no. this being the first step of kind of getting back to where you yeah. guys want to be. I think the guys. I think the guys are anxious. I think they're anxious to play. I mean, I got good feedback from the Louisville game. Uh, they were they were pretty pleased with you know getting out there against an opponent that they didn't know, and you know all that's going to help. And you know we'll see see how Colorado goes. Uh, Brian, last one for me. That coaches a lot of times are uh, criticized and judged on results alone, with the uh, yeah. not making the playoffs and then. What happened in the Club World Cup? Do you feel any extra pressure independently? Uh, internally. Internally, yes. Externally? I mean, I've said this before. Anybody that buys a ticket has a right to, you know, have an opinion. And there are a lot of strong opinions around here in Seattle. Uh, but 
you know, that, that, that pressure all comes from inside.